Most people these days know that if you want to have traffic on your website, you've got to have a blog. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to write a blog that actually gets read, which means more people engage with you and you're going to rank higher on Google. My name is Ryan Toth. I'm the CEO of ClearBrand. I'm a StoryBrand certified guide. And in this video, I'm going to reveal the exact methods that we use at ClearBrand to write blog articles that have made us rank on the first page in Google for a number of keywords. Let's jump in. When you're writing a blog, there are multiple hurdles that you've got to get over in order to have a blog that gets read. Because if your article is not getting read, it doesn't matter that it exists. Because that's the whole point. The point is not to have a well-read blog. The point is to have a thriving business. And a well-read blog might be part of that, but it's not the end goal. It's more likely that that well-read blog is what's going to help you get there. That blog article is going to help you show up on Google. It's going to help you get more leads and it's going to help you get more sales. But in order to do all those things, it's got to be read and enjoyed. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing is you've got to pick topics, topics that work, topics that are evergreen. Those are going to be the best use of your time. If your blog article is only relevant for a week or two and people are only sharing it for a week or two, you're missing out on so much potential engagement. What we want to write is a blog article that is going to be linked to and shared over and over for months, not just days, maybe even years. So how do we do that? A couple things. First off, you want to see what people are Googling for in your industry. You can do that using tools like Google Keyword or uh, Uber Suggest. And then you want to see what's ranking pretty highly. If you're in a new industry, which is a more of a common thing these days because people are inventing companies and they're inventing these ideas and things, that's fine. Just do some market research, maybe talk to some friends if that's if that's all that you can do right now and find out what would they type into Google if they were going to look for something like yours, but not just Google like the name of your product, right? If you sell running shoes that make somebody go faster, they might be Googling for something like, how do I run faster? That would be a great blog article. Not only will that get you readers, but that will get you readers who are also potential customers. And that's part of the goal here. Now there's two primary types of blog articles that tend to rank well and be fairly evergreen. One is a list. You make a list of things like top 21 ways to lose weight. And if you put the year in there, you're also gonna increase the conversions. So maybe we would say top 21 ways to lose weight in 2021. A how-to list is going to be something like how to find the key, the right keyword for your business. You want to have like step-by-steps that go through that. Uh, WikiHow is a website that basically only exists with how-to articles. So if you don't have a lot of ideas for what you can write about, stick to one of those two, a list or a how-to. Now you can also do like what, where, why kinds of things, all sorts of stuff that can uh, can turn out to be a blog article, but that's a good place to start is with a list or a how-to. Now, once you have your topic, how do you write your blog? Well, I'm going to show you. In fact, we have a template that we use at ClearBrand that I'm going to show you in this video and in the below the video, there'll be a link where you can download this exact template to use in your business. All right, so when you download the blog template, this is what you're going to see. We have clear brand blog template, obviously. Now, the first thing up here is actually the story brand framework. This is gonna be your outline for your blog. Research shows that story-based marketing, stories in general, are the best way to communicate. Facts and figures, right? PowerPoint presentations, these kinds of things only activate two parts of the brain, but stories activate seven. So we're going to frame your blog in the format of a story. And this is how we're going to do that. We're going to follow this as our outline. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to start off in the character and you're going to ask this question. What does the reader want? Okay. You will then write the answer to that question. So if I'm selling running shoes, maybe the reader wants to run faster. 
easy. Okay, and I'm gonna put this up here. I'm gonna bold this so that I can see that that's my answer. Great. Now, what problem is getting in their way? They, they this is a, the problem that they're experiencing if they're a runner is, maybe they plateaued. Uh, they're, they're not improving, which is kind of the same thing. They know they're not reaching their potential. So a note on the problem here, what we want to really do is connect with the problem that people are experiencing. That's why, you know, what problem is getting in their way? Well, if they want to run faster, it might be things like calories. It might be things like their training regimen is wrong, um, which we actually put in here. But they're not going to know those things. If they're training, if they're training for like a marathon and they want to run faster, they're already in a training regimen. They don't. That's not the perceived problem. The perceived problem is, I'm not making improvements anymore. I have plateaued. You know, I I I haven't hit my a new PR in years. Right. Those are the perceived problems. So even though, you know, if the blog article is going to focus on a training regimen, we first need to connect with the problems that they are experiencing, those perceived problems. After we've connected with those, then we can say, well, the real problem is actually your training regimen, right? Or maybe it's uh, your diet. I don't know. We could, at this point, we could go a lot of different directions. Now, let's move on to the guide section. So this is all about trust. The guide section is all about trust. Why can the reader trust you to solve, to help them solve their problem? So we want to do, uh, talk about whatever we want to demonstrate trust. So if you are uh, talking about running faster, you better have run faster yourself, you know, or the other option is to have the data. Here's the data. Now, personal experience or having worked with clients, you know, it helps other people do this. That's really beneficial to, to build trust. So even if your solution is data driven, it's still helpful to have done it yourself. Uh, so why can the reader trust you to help them solve the problem? Well, in this case, we might say something like, um, you know, I, I had plateaued for years, then overcame it and reached, you know, Olympic, level speeds I'm making this up I didn't actually do this but that'd be a great example here so that's oh wow you reached Olympic level speeds you did what I'm trying to do I can trust you right that's the that's the goal here plan okay now what is a step-by-step -step solution they can follow to solve their problem now if you're familiar with the Storyband framework you know that normally we want to have a three-step plan on your home page on your services page that is what we really want. Three steps. I never go more than three steps. Uh, it, you, it's just unnecessary and it's clunky. Now, in a blog article, though, that that is not a limitation here. In a blog article, what we want to do is blow the reader away with our solution. So three steps, if they're good, if they're going to get the results that the person's after, great but if you need more steps in order to deliver incredible results for somebody do more steps all right so this is all about the results people will trust you more if you if they can get the results they're after just from reading your your blog article so if this was an article about losing 10 pounds in two weeks they better lose 10 pounds in two weeks or more right and so if you can't tell them how to do that in three steps then add some steps now here what we might want to outline is uh and i'm making all this up but uh maybe there's there's you know five parts to a winning marathon training regimen you know one is sleep two is diet three is um, the training itself uh, four is rest right and what you do is you'd go through all of this and then maybe in there, you might provide a sample calendar or something, right? Again, we're going after the results here. It's not just having a tidy three-step plan in your article. No, no, no. We want to make sure that we can deliver the results. Now, 
I would not go 21 steps if you're doing a how-to because that's hard. People aren't gonna get the results because that's just too much. They're not gonna actually follow through. So when you're doing a how-to, you do wanna consider the follow-through to make sure that it's actually doable. And so having a, a limited number of steps will help, not for the sake of clarity here, but for the sake of follow-through. And again, we wanna do whatever is gonna get the results for the, the readers. Now, if you're doing a list article, you can do as many as you want. You could do 201 ways to run faster. That's totally fine. All right, in a list article, you can categorize them. You'd wanna make it easy to digest. So maybe you've got you know, about 20 uh, categories and about 10 things that somebody can do in each category. I mean, that's a lot, but that might make you the authority on this subject. That's what a list article has the potential to do. We have a list article for StoryBrand website examples. We've got over a hundred StoryBrand website examples and we continue to add more. This list article has made us the authority on Google when it comes to StoryBrand websites. If you go type in StoryBrand website examples, we are on that first page and we continue to move up because nobody else has over a hundred story website examples, right? And even if somebody decided to add one, it'd be too late. We're already the ones who are ranking. Even if their article was better than ours, chances are because we were there first, Google has given us that domain authority. Google now trusts us because people spent a lot of time on our site going through the hundred plus story brand website examples. Google trusts us and they will continue to send us people. Same thing with you. If this is an article about running faster and you wanted to do 101 ways to run faster, great. You're not limited to a certain number of steps here. Instead, what you would want these to be is very simple and very bite-sized so that you know a person, what you want is for them to bookmark this page and come back to it over and over and over, right? If I'm a runner, I wanna make sure that I'm working my way through that list to see what am I, am I doing everything on this list to run faster. So that's your plan, it's how you're solving the problem. And I'm giving two examples here, the list and the how to, but there's a lot of other ways that you could do that. I'm gonna go with 101 ways to run faster in 2021. And again, putting the date, the, the year on there actually increases conversions, but you've gotta go through and update that on a, on a yearly basis. If you do something else that, like if you were teaching somebody how to use social media, for example, well, the rules for that change pretty frequently. You can continue to update the blog article over time and continue to build on the authority that that article is getting, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you don't just leave it there, especially if you put a, a year in here like this. In 2022, running faster in 2021 is no longer gonna be helpful. So we're gonna go in and we would update that article uh, to then be the 2022. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little recap, okay? But uh, the recap's down further on this template, so I'm gonna get to that in a second. Right now, though, we're just gonna look at failure and success. So if they don't take action, what negative results will they experience? I like to think of this as the before because people are already experiencing the negative results. So what are they currently experiencing is I think a, is a, actually a better way. What negative results um, are they currently Experiencing it's a much simpler way to go about this question. So uh, right now uh, not hitting PRs right personal records um, Not running faster Not you know worried. I'm getting old Those are some of the negative results that I'm currently experiencing now if they do take action What positive results will they experience? Well, they're gonna run faster, right? They're gonna get what they want is the simplest way to say that um, and then we can go further. They'll set new PRs, you know, they'll impress their friends and family and, and on and on. Now, sometimes there's a call to action. A lot of times in a blog article, it's, it's do what we said, right? You don't need to say that. You can just end at the uh, failure. The call to action might be baked into the plan, for example. If you're doing 101 ways to run faster, Technically, each of those is kind of a call to action, right? So one of them might be get 
eight to 10 hours of sleep every night that you run more than 10 miles. That is both a solution item and a call to action. I'm telling you to get eight to 10 hours of sleep when you run more than 10 miles. Um, so you, sometimes your call to action is baked in. I leave this here because occasionally it makes sense to have a call to action at the end. Um, for example, on this particular video and blog article that you are currently watching, the call to action is going to be download this free blog template. All right, so I'm gonna warn you, I'm gonna say that here at the end. Download the free blog template. Now, all of the things in here are things that you can do, but that is a way to simplify the whole process and to make this easier. You're gonna to get to download this template. Um, so that's what I would put here. Uh, keyword, now after you've, you can do this before or after, right? Um, you, you do wanna have a keyword because the whole purpose of your blog is to increase your traffic uh, to have a thriving business. You also want to provide value to your, your customer. So your outline is how you provide value to your readers, but you do need the keyword to decide on um, what are you going to write about. And so at the beginning of this, uh, these steps, I mentioned figuring out a topic. You're actually going to put that in this keyword section. So in this case, we're talking about uh, how to run faster is the keyword. Um, now, if you already outlined this because you, you, you had this really good idea that you wanted to write about, go to your keyword research now, put your keyword here, and then adjust your idea so that it actually matches the keyword. Uh, if you started there, then what you want to do is double check, look back over this. So for example, how to run faster. That's actually what our character wants, right? And often there's alignment between the keyword and what the character wants because they're Googling it, right? They're searching for it. If they're searching for it, it is obviously what they want, okay? So again, your keyword and your character want will likely be the same. All right, now let's get down into the, the guts of this. This is where you're actually going to write your article. And if you notice, I've got a heading one here, heading two, heading three, normal text. The great thing about this is you're going to follow that same format on your blog article. So your title is going to be a heading one. That's going to help you rank higher. Then you're going to have, just like an outline, you're going to have this kind of cascading flow of the text. And even though I've got these bullet points here, on I'm doing this so that I can continue to see the flow throughout this. You don't need the bullet points. We can actually get rid of those. Um, but you can see here this kind of cascades and, and there's there's this nice hierarchy. We want to keep the hierarchy even if we get rid of the bullet points. Okay, so let's walk through how to do that. So the title is going to be, like I said, how to run faster. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 101 ways. 101 ways to run faster in 2021. Great, there's your title. Um, and we got the keyword in there, run faster. Now, the problem. Notice the instructions here. You typically want to start with the problem, okay? What the character wants is built into the title. So you don't need to start there. And if you start with the problem, you're going to hook people better. So I'm going to start writing it as an article and I'm going to leave this here as uh, as my guide. Now, what I could do is I could replace this with uh, the text. Oh, man, I keep using this word. Have you plateaued? And then I can get down into the text there. Um, personally, I, I don't like to write with the structure. I like to write and then add the structure in later. So, um, have you plateaued? haven't seen a new PR in months. Um, you know, so you notice here, I'm actually going through the problem that we outlined before. Great. Now, notice this, we wanna start with the problem, then we want to agitate the problem. What does that mean? We wanna get really specific with this. So if your problem tends to be kind of ethereal, kind of up in the clouds, we wanna make sure that we bring it down to earth. We connect that problem with their survival. Okay, so this one doesn't need to be long. Have you plateaued? Haven't seen a new PR in months? 
That's a pretty simple problem. I'm not going to sit here and make you watch me write this, but we could agitate it uh, by saying things like, um, uh, by, by, in this case, what I would want to do is tell my story, right? I saw the same thing and I hated it, right? I, I'd be in the middle of a marathon and I would see people running past me when before I had been running past people. You know, so you want to get really specific and a personal story is often a great way to do that. And you can just dig, dig into the, uh, dig into your experience and use that to agitate the problem. Now, before we get to the solution, what we want to do is get to the, is talk about the guide section. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to say, you know, blah, blah here, more agitating the problem. Now, what's the guide section after years? of trying and almost giving up because I was so tired of trying things that didn't work, I finally found the solution. And I'm gonna show it to you in this article. There are 101 ways to, that you can run faster in 2021 and I will reveal those. The reason why I had been running slowly was because I was only doing 17 of these things, right? So you can do that. So we want to build the authority, build the trust. Um, typically that is, I did this. That's the easiest way to build that trust, okay? Um, so you're going to do that. This doesn't need to be long. This can be short. If you need more, great. But it's often, hey, I did what I'm about to show you. Now we get into the plan and solution. And again, you're not going to write this with all of these bullet points in here, but I have the bullet points here so that you can see the hierarchy of things. This is going to be a title for your planner solution, and that's going to be an, a heading to uh, on your website on in that blog. And then you're going to break down each of your steps of your how-to or each item in your list, um, you know, one by one. And if it's a how-to, if you're going to have text below that, a list, you don't really need it, uh, depending on what kind of a list you're doing. A how-to, you definitely need some text because you're going to be describing what to do. Now notice the flow of this. If step, if I was going to write a how-to for how to run faster, I might say step one is get the sleep that you need. Uh, the pr then I'm going to flow through this below that. So if this step one was get the sleep you need, um, the problem would be, you know, most people uh, start to plateau when their body can't keep up with the exercise that they're engaging in. What I'm doing there is I'm telling them what the problem is, okay? Then after I've outlined the problem of this specific section, I'm gonna move to the solution. So because the problem of this specific section is your body can't keep up, you need more rest, that's the solution, right? So what do you do? When you stop seeing gains, you start adding one or two extra days of rest between your workouts. That's the solution for this section. So you're going to rest. You're going to get that sleep. Make sure that you're sleeping eight to 10 hours a night. And again, I'm making all of this up. Okay. Then we're going to finish this section with the success. When you do this and when you do it correctly, you will start to see gains again because your body has time to recover and to build muscle rather than just try to keep up. That's when you're going to see those, your new PRs, right? So now we're getting into that success. And then we're going to do that with the step two. Maybe step two is adjust your exercise schedule based on your age. Problem. People in their 50s will train the same way they did in their 20s. Their body is totally different. It cannot do the same things that they were doing in their 20s. Uh, this, by the way, I know that this is a myth, right? This is false. There's, there are, there's a book out there called Body by Science. If you're curious about workouts that work for everyone at any age, Body by Science. Uh, but this is an example I'm making up for, for here, right? So then we'd, we'd cycle through the solution and then through the success. And then again, we're going to cycle through problem, solution, success in each section. Now we're going to get to the conclusion. Now, if you've got a lot of steps, do not do a recap, right? The person can scroll back up. It is that easy. Uh, if you've got a small number of steps, you are welcome to recap, but it's not necessary. That's one of those things that a lot of folks learned in like high school English is 
you know, to do all of these things and then to recap and then to move forward. And it's not a bad idea, but it's also not necessary. You don't actually need to recap. This isn't a paper that you're writing in your high school English class. Um, it's there if it's if you think it's going to be helpful, but again, they can just scroll up, uh, especially if it's long. You don't want to have a recap section that's like 101 ways, and then you recap all of those. That would be ridiculous. So use your brain here. Um, then we are going to say, hey, in failure success, you can also think of that as before and after, right? When you start doing these things, you know, when, when you do what we said here, you will stop experiencing these failures, right? That before, the things that you're experiencing now. And instead, you will start experiencing these successes. Uh, so StoryBrand calls it failure or success. I think before and after is a little bit easier to think about. Um, so you can go ahead and uh, throw that in and then finish with a call to action if you're going to have it. So let's do a quick recap. The first thing that you're going to do when you are writing your blog is you're going to find your keyword. You're going to figure out what are people searching for and, and what kinds of articles are out there. And you're going to do that article better. If somebody has a list of 27 ways to run faster in 2021, you're going to do a list of 157 ways to run faster in 2021, right? If somebody has a list of how to lose 10 pounds in two weeks, you're going to do a better version of that, right? That's part of how you can rank. This is called the skyscraper te technique. Brian Dean talks about this. You want to do it better. Now, after you've got your keyword and you've got your plan for how to do it better, we're going to outline it. How do you do that? By following this. You're going to go through the storyboard framework and then you're going to answer each of these questions. And that is, you're going to answer each of these questions and that is your outline. Then you're going to scroll down in this template and you're going to start to fill in this outline down here. You can do that. Like I said, I like to write above this and I will use this as my guide. But as you write this, you're only going to talk about the problem where it says problem here. You're not going to talk about the problem, um, you know, in, in this success part. If you're going to, you're going to talk about the problem here, 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 um, here. And then you're going to move on to the guide section, right? And so you're going to follow this outline to a T. Uh, in this section, you'll cycle through the problem, solution, success, and then you move on to the conclusion, right? So you're going to follow this outline. You're going to apply what you wrote in your outline. And now you're actually going to write the article following these steps. Now, the easiest way to do this is to simply download this blog template. You can do that by clicking the link below this video. You're going to enter your email. We will send you this blog template to your email and then rewatch this video while you're writing it so that you can make sure you've got it right. And that's it. When you follow these steps, you will stop seeing crickets on your blog, especially if you do your, your keyword reset research right and you find topics that people actually want to read. And then you write this way. You're going to stop hearing those crickets and instead you are going to see the results. You're going to see your traffic increase. We have seen people 15x their traffic from doing techniques like this on their website. And that's what I want for you. So click the link below the video, download the blog template, apply what you learned and grow your business.